We're back once again with Francis Cardinal Arenzi, one of our primary spiritual and theological advisors, along with Dr. Burns Seeley. Remnants, thank you for joining us. Thank you. And, uh, you know, the document we're going to be reviewing here, we're in our new studios, if you haven't noticed, at our John Paul II Holy Family Center. And we're going to be talking about this document, Reconciliation and Penance. When the Holy Father was in Fatima in 1982 to thank Our Lady for s saving his life through her intercession, the attempted assassination of his life, he said the next Senate of Bishops would be in the Fatima message, Reconciliation and Penance. And I personally feel that this document is really a catechesis on the essence of consecration, commitment. And Your Eminence, maybe you can just uh, let us know the background of the world to which Pope John Paul presents this, this document. Yeah, thank you very much. It's a world in which there are divisions. He speaks of a shattered world, a world in which there are tensions, tensions between nations, groups of nations, individuals. It is a world in which we see brother not agreeing with brother. The church also is not immune from divisions. Even from the early days, there were threats and actual divisions in the church. In, today, in today's church, we also notice divisions, groups, factions. The root of all of them, says the Holy Father, is sin. Mm -hmm. And if that is not recognized, there will not be much hope of a solution. It was this general background that perhaps led many of the bishops of the world to suggest this theme. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Father chose it for the Synod of Bishops held in 1983. Well, that was an extraordinary holy year during that time, wasn't it? 283, 84, where the Holy Father uh, declared an extraordinary holy year during that period, and the Synod was during that period, I believe. There was. There, it was during the Holy Year. Indeed, mm -hmm. the Holy Father himself said that he did, he made that choice mm -hmm. consciously, since reconciliation and penance were very much part of that Holy Year. Mm -hmm. He was choosing it at that very time. That was the Holy Year to commemorate our redemption. Right. Mm -hmm. Since our Lord would have died around the year 33, mm -hmm. and that was 1983. Right. So, not that we are sure that he died exactly in right. the year 33, but about that. But it was amazing, because um, I guess normally holy years are every 25 years, and the last one was 1975, and the next one normally would have been 19, or the year 2000, but the Holy Fathers had two now during yeah. this period. And, uh, that is the normal holy year. Right. But there was also a holy year of the redemption in 1933 okay, by Pope Pius XI. Mm -hmm. And you can see this of 1983 is 50 years after right, that. that so in know. any case, the Holy Father can declare a holy year anytime, anytime he wants. He right. considers <laughs> he has enough, enough reason. Right. Uh -huh. Your Eminence, while you see, well, the Holy Father is saying the root of all these divisions is sin. I noticed over and over again he brings up the theme that man largely or so many of us are not conscious of sin. We're not, we don't acknowledge sin in the abstract nor in the particular. And that is one major reason why between many people and nations there isn't reconciliation. Mm -hmm. Because unless we human beings accept that the root of these divisions is the human person's rejection of the will of God, because that is what sin is. Right. Sin is not something which we invented. It is a thing which human beings actually do. The maker has inserted instructions in our nature, the creator. When the human being violates consciously 
the instructions of our maker. It is called in theology a sin. It is a choice of the human will against the will of God. Mm -hmm. Things didn't happen by chance, much less the human person. It is human person's rejection of God's will that violates relations with God and also violates relations with neighbor and makes reconciliation therefore necessary and also penance. But unless a person accepts sin, the reality of sin, right. then reconciliation and penance are not really possible, possible. for that person. Even beyond that, then there's so many of us that don't even acknowledge God's existence, at least not on a practical level. There is practical atheism. Those who in practice live as if there were no God. There is then a theoretical atheism, those who professedly declare. Many people are not even careful enough to give God attention to deny his existence. Right, they simply is. live as if he were not mm. there. In yeah. a sense, it is worse. Mm -hmm. That's right. Because sometimes people can, like in the ne last eight, 10 months, some people in the West, let us say in Western Europe, what we used to call Western Europe and mm -hmm. North America, right. can feel, ah, the Eastern Europe was under the rule of communists who don't believe in God. But we might get a surprise that some people from Eastern Europe might now show much more practical belief in God than many in the opulent West That's who right. live as if God were not there at all. It seems like it gets down to that <clears throat> part in Revelation where God will vomit out of his mouth the lukewarm. It seems like we're, we've moved into that mode rather than being, we just ignore God in, in our society rather than uh, oppose him. Yeah, without condemning everybody right. to that category. No, because there are very many good people <laughs> in right. this country, in Canada, in parts of Europe. There are very many good people. Right. But we cannot deny that it is one of the epidemics mm -hmm. in the society, especially in the society, consumeristic right. society. In the society in which people have so much money, so much free time, so much food, they don't know what to do with all this. Yeah. Somebody wrote a doctoral thesis on the use of free time. <laughs> that is a sign of, that's, that's of, right. of uh, a society that has too much of many You, you talk things. about that at the end of section two, the Holy Father talks about that abuse of freedom. He says, the, he says in, in the light of faith, we call it sin, beginning with the original sin, which all of us bear with uh, the birth as an inheritance from our first parents to the sin which each one of us commits when we abuse our own freedom. So really sin is an abuse of freedom and that's a, uh, the Holy Father uses that term. It is necessary it, to acknowledge the fact of sin. The sense of sin means sensitivity to mm -hmm. the will of God. Indeed it is the beginning of wisdom. The scripture says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Right. We can look at it the other way. Fear of the Lord, not servile fear, but indeed it means love. It mm -hmm. means attention to what God wants. Like a good child who loves the father and the right. mother. And he recognizes that they are there. Loves them, therefore does what they want. Mm -hmm. Different from that child who couldn't care less. Who hasn't even time to say good morning to father and mother? Who does not take notice that parents exist? It's a bad child. Anything can come out of that fellow. Mm -hmm. Your Eminence, I no notice too the Holy Father is saying, well, deep within our very natures, but often hidden because of the lifestyle that you just mentioned, is a sense of God's existence and also the, our conscience, the sense of sin, but we obscure it. Yes, the obscuring of the sense of sin is one of the major moral disasters that can happen to a human being. And if that happens to a high number in society, that society is in trouble. Okay. I think Bishop Sheen said that the sin, well, he, I think he was quoting Pius XII, 
uh, that the, the sin of our age is, the, is losing the sense of sin. We don't feel we're committing sin. Now, you would call that amorality, wouldn't you? And you have immorality and then you slip into amorality when you don't even think it's a sin anymore. Yes, we call it amorality. Indeed, the one who does evil but accepts that right. it is an evil, there is some hope right. of a change. The one who does evil, who commits sin, but does not accept that it is a sin, hasn't even reached stage one, first step towards this is, this amendment. Is, and this no is hope. Where, yeah, this is where we are in America. For example, <clears throat> on many college campuses, I would say most college campuses throughout the United States and Canada, the immoral lifestyle that is, that is just taken for granted by the student body is accepted, and it's not even looked on as, as a sin where 20 years ago it might have happened, but it was looked on as a sin. And I think this is where we have slipped. And so often I hear parents are so proud they sent their children away to school. We have young people coming to us from all over the country telling us what's going on in these schools, in private schools as well as public, and in these campuses, the immoral lifestyle. And it's just taken for granted. And the parents feel that, well, oh, I went to that school when I was young, and and it was a good school, and then they send their children to that school, and it's not the same. And I think we're, we, as parents, we have to check out the morality of the schools in which we send our children to. And one of the best ways to do it is just to go on campus, read the campus newspaper, and talk to the kids, and listen to them in the cafeteria, and see if it's an immoral lifestyle being projected there. And if it is, you should do everything you can to prevent your child from going to that college. But this is where we are today, in, in, in what, at least in the United States and Canada. I'm talking a broad sweep nationally. It's amoral lifestyle in our campuses, not immoral anymore. They don't even think it's a sin. It is rather serious. It is serious, because these are our leaders. It's rather serious. That's right. Because when, in terms of um, feeling, if I put my hand in the fire, I feel the fire, I take away my hand. Right. There is still hope. I'm my, I am healthy. But if I put my fingers in the fire and I don't feel the fire, That's and right. the fire has burned the whole finger, the doctor says that person has leprosy. That's right. He does no more feelings. Yes. He's not all right. He's all wrong. Right. I think this is where we are. It's rather serious. It is, and I think the, this is why this document is so important. Uh, Your Eminence, uh, the Holy Father, sort of gives a definition for penance, and he ties it in with uh, metanoia. Maybe you can give us, uh, what do we mean by penance? Yes, the Holy Father speaks of various meanings of penance. The first one he takes on is that metanoia in the scriptures. It means repentance, return to God. As the Holy Father says, the inmost change of heart under the influence of the Word of God. People hear the Word of God, as Christ said, repent and believe mm -hmm. in the Gospel. That's one meaning of penance. Consequent on that, changing one's life in harmony with that change of heart. Change of heart, which means what orientation of our uh, thinking and willing it must then affect our action. Then a third meaning, they are all related, mm -hmm. is what we sometimes call asceticism, living lives of self-control, spiritual discipline. We think, for instance, of fasting, of sleeping on the floor, not advisable in winter, mm -hmm. then uh, of walking barefoot, which for us in Nigeria is not really penance, <laughs> but here it could be penance. Right. It, it differs. There were hair shirts in the Middle Ages. One needs advice and prudent um, directions mm -hmm. because some can go to excess. But there is no denying that asceticism is necessary mm -hmm. in our life because we are children of a fallen race, Adam and Eve, by original sin, transmitted to all of us. Mm -hmm. We have that inclination to evil so that without specific effort to mm -hmm. control self and to even renounce what may be lawful, mm -hmm. we will not be able to reject what is unlawful. So asceticism is necessary. It's spiritual discipline. Yeah, yeah spiritual, spiritual discipline, discipline. Mm -hmm. or mortification, mm -hmm. or self-denial. Mm -hmm. 
The, just that's mm -hmm. what the, the uh, athletes are doing. That's right, that's they're right. doing it. The there. Olympics yeah. and mm -hmm. uh, these people who played in the World Cup. Mm -hmm. You just imagine 10 minutes before the final, the, the, the game, soccer. Would they go and eat four plates of food mm -hmm. and drink four bottles of beer and then run into the <laughs> field? They'll be beaten, of course. They yeah. have to control themselves. Right. Then penance is also the, applied the title to that sacrament which reconciles us to God mm -hmm. and gives us pardon and peace. We sometimes call it confession. We'll talk about it afterwards, right. not now. Mm -hmm. Reminiscent mean, metanoia, then that change of heart is really turning from, or change of mind as the word literally means in the Greek, turning for that of a mind from self, the world, the flesh, the devil, to God. Yes. Yes. Because that is the main thing, that's the definition of sin. Turning towards a creature and turning away from God. Yeah. That's what sin is. So, metanoia, repentance, penance is the opposite mm -hmm. of that. A change of course, That's a right. change of direction. Right. That means conversion. Mm -hmm. We say heart because it, it, heart is regarded as just a symbol, it's human language. Right. It isn't physical. Now you mentioned creature, uh, Your Eminence. Uh, the audience is so they know what creature means. It means any person or thing or anything outside. It. So a person could uh, be hooked on drugs. That's a creature, and what you meant by Yes, Turn, so. turning away from God, turning towards a creature means anything mm -hmm. in which a person, place, which a person chooses okay. against the will of God. Mm -hmm. For the bank robber, it is the money in the bank and what he will do with that money. For the prostitute, it is the money she will get from the people who come to her. And for that, she is ready to give herself. Mm -hmm. For the, uh, the person who sins with another person's wife or daughter, it is just the pleasure that person gets for a few minutes. For the one who, rob, uh, who uh, uh, deceives in politics, mm -hmm. it is power or position, or, or the finance it gives, or whatever else. Right. But whatever it is, for some other people, it is simply a little smoke of vanity. Mm -hmm. They tell a little lie in order to get um, a bit of praise. Uh, you can see immediately that sins are not all of the same type. Mm -hmm. If a person just tell a little lie and gets a little praise, is not the same type of sin as one who cuts off the heads of five people. <laughs> right, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so your eminence, then the change of heart, that conversion, must first of all start with the grace of God. We can't do it without God's grace, but that's easier than that following through and actually acting and praying as God wants us to live. Yes, the change, that whole thing is impossible without God's help. The spiritual help God gives us so that we return to Him. Mm -hmm. We call it grace. Uh, actual grace, but whatever name we call it, that spiritual help God gives the erring person, the prodigal son who has gone away, mm -hmm. so that the person will realize his or her wrong direction and now return to the Father. Mm -hmm. that, is the, that actual grace can be a homily heard in a church, it can be seeing a young man or young woman who is living very well according to God's will. It can be looking at a church. It can be seeing a dead person and realizing one will be dead one day or simply an orthopedic case. It can be seeing those who were great last year and now they have lost everything in this world. Whatever way God helps, but not without the response of the individual. God will not do save anyone against the person's wish. God offers the help, right. but the individual must accept. He, he respects our freedom. He does. As Christ said, I stand at the door and knock. Mm -hmm. Those who open to me, I come in to them yeah. and have supper with them. And one saint said, fear Jesus knocking, you are not opening, and he passing by. You know, the prodigal son, again, just going back on that parable, there's so much richness just in, in uh, meditating on that because uh, here we have the, 
the young, the, the young man that went off and lived a life of sin, and then his brother that apparently didn't, stayed loyal to the father. Uh, and then when the young man came back and repented, the father, again, our, our God, is God the Father of mercy, welcoming him back and giving him back his full inheritance. But then the bitterness of the older son, the one that stuck with him, and the Holy Father says, we don't know if the older son was ever reconciled with the father. And that what I would consider sort of, you would have the, the liberal and the conservative and one going off and living a life of sin, finally repenting, coming back to God. And sometimes I feel that those of us that are uh, staying with it, we have to be so careful not to slip into that, that mode of the other son or of a Pharisee. Because that pride is a worse sin than the other son, isn't it, Father? I mean, you are right. I agree perfectly, and that's the Holy Father stretches it out mm -hmm. in paragraphs 5 and 6, which will repay oh, reading reflection. Mm -hmm. We often speak of the parable of the prodigal son. Right. It could be called the parable of the merciful father. That's very, that, that would be the best, uh, much <laughs> the, better title. The goodness title. of God that's right. who accepts the erring son who has dissipated his goods. There are so many depths to that parable. Mm -hmm. But let's take just that one you touched on. Right. That is, the other brother who, had, who remained at home refused to join in the feast. Mm -hmm. His father pleaded with him and said, but he, he used rather rough language. He said, mm -hmm. this your son who has dissipated your money with his women. How did he know what his brother did with the money? That's true. Maybe his brother didn't even touch even one woman that he was simply not able to manage the money properly. Mm -hmm. But he imputes the very worst motives. Mm -hmm. uh, and then he said, this your son. He didn't say, my brother. That's true. It's, that's a sign. Mm -hmm. Then he said, all these years I have been serving you. So it isn't really that he loved his father all those years. He was simply carrying out duties. Mm -hmm. Is that a good child that just feels towards my parents, I have been serving my parents mm -hmm. all these years. Are you a slave? So mm -hmm. the Holy Father says, he too needs to be converted in order to be reconciled. Right. <laughs> yeah, you never, you never and think we of must, that. Yeah. As you warned, yeah. We must be careful that we don't act like that second brother, mm -hmm. self-righteous. Yeah. You remember that parable of the workers in the vineyard, those hired at 5 o'clock in the evening, got exact yeah. same pay as those hired at 8 o'clock in the morning. And they weren't very happy about it, the ones that <laughs> stayed at 8 o'clock in the morning. I think this is so, you know, I, I think what happens with those that, come into a life of, of a spiritual life and want to sanctify their life, it seems like the temptation that the devil comes at them with is a spiritual pride to start looking down on others that aren't living a spiritual life yet, judging others, and uh, we have to catch ourselves and examine ourselves on that repeatedly because the only ones that God got mad at in the scriptures uh, were the Pharisees. He, he didn't say the other ones were going to go to heaven, but he really got mad at the Pharisees. You are right. There's the sense of resentment, too, because often, and certainly in this parable, that's true. The elder son was very resentful of the special treatment mm -hmm. the father was giving him. But then our Lord, in the parable of the, of the lost sheep, he said there's more rejoicing in heaven over one that's been found than over the 99 who had stayed all the time, who had not been lost. Yes. You would almost begin to suspect that he envies, envies that's right. the sinner. That's right. that's right, yeah. That means he doesn't love his father. Yeah. That's what it means. He is full of himself. Right. It is a temptation we all have to watch. Mm -hmm. Your Eminence, we want to thank you, really, for uh, your insights and, and really nursing us through this document that has, uh, I think, once it's understood, it can change society. And I think this document alone, reconciliation and penance, can convert our nation if we understand it. We're all looking for peace. In our lives, and our families, we're all looking for happiness. And if we want a key to happiness, uh, it, it can be found right in this document. I can say